¿Hola? Sí. ¿Cuál es la siguiente? ¿La siguiente diapositiva cuál es? Vale. Hello, hello. Good afternoon, almost good evening. Maybe not for Spanish time. So first of all, I would like to thank you, all the representatives from the different cities that has another year uh, are participating in the in the Serene Cities uh, Encounter. Mesa Pro. Um, well. Last year, 2018, we have a summit on sharing cities, taking the testimony from Amsterdam and New York. Um, 2016, Amsterdam, 2017, New York, and 2018, Amsterdam, uh, sorry, Barcelona. Um, it, was the, it was a very important moment for us, and I think it was uh, the confirmation that the uh, hypothesis that Amsterdam uh, triggered in, in 2016 that we, we have a very important topic, cities with this sharing economy. We have both challenges and opportunities to, to face and that we should work together. That a hypothesis was confirmed and every year we have found uh, cities that were interested in participating in this, in this very uh, outcome-orientated uh, uh, encounters. This year we are organizing something smaller, not as big as last year. Last year, we managed to, to consensuate that uh, 10 points declaration. It was the first international declarations of cities regarding platform economy and collaborative economy. And, and since then, I think we have a very, very interesting common framework for cities to work in all the challenges that we are facing every day in housing, mobility, uh, pro uh, economic promotion, uh, work uh, rights, Labor, labor policies. Um, this year, we 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 want to continue we uh, taking profit of the of the framework of the uh, Smart City Congress and the Smart City Expo, of this conversation, of, on this uh, collaboration, of this exchange of information and and ideas. We just had a very interesting session uh, trying to 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 explain what have been the, the last uh, outcomes and the last learnings and the last actions from our cities in the different topics we are we are launching we are going to have like last year three days of activities here with activists researchers entrepreneurs professionals academics uh sharing projects sharing ideas um that are, i think are going to basically are going to be useful for us in our daily life making our policy making more more efficient and more effective with all these very changing uh, challenges we are having um, I want to make just a, a little uh, a little comment because in some point uh, the the authorities uh, walk is going to appear around here and maybe we're going to have to stop uh, for like the the media moment, but we will continue with this explanation uh, right after they they, they leave. But just uh, ask in in advance for this patience of to deal with this with this situation. So that was the that's the ten principles we consensued last year. I think 10 principles that uh, are very much uh, in line with the policy making we are doing in our cities um, from all, all, all our, our different countries and, and all over the world, basically, is the first framework made by cities on this, on this subject. And I think uh, it's something we have to be proud that we, we were managed to do it and that we have to, to let's say, take care to make sure that we, we it really inspire our, our policy making and it's not just a paper that we, we sign one day. And I want to give the, the word to, to Mayo. She's the director of the Serene Cities uh, program and the director of the Demons Research Group. We, most of this program has been, has been launched uh, between the collaborations of different cities, but within Barcelona is the collaboration between a university, the Universitat Oberta de Catalunya, and, uh, and the Ayuntamiento de Barcelona, the Barcelona City Council. So thank you very much to everybody. Thank you very much to the team that has been working on, on having this stand lab uh, working during th these three days. And I hope this, this is going to be an inspiring conversation and we are going to make a, a kind of update of what is the situation of the Serene Cities uh, program. Thank you. Diana? Thank you, uh, Alvaro. And welcome, uh, everyone. 
I am uh, Mayo Fuster from the WOG University that is uh, together with the Barcelona City Council uh, uh, doing a joint effort for uh, promoting the Sharing Cities uh, uh, Task Force. I am extremely happy uh, to be here today after one year in which uh, we met here and we uh, signed the declaration and also because for, for the Sharing Cities uh, uh, Action Program uh, it's a moment of, of celebration from the perspective of one year of work. Uh, still, the 30 cities decided to uh, come back here and have meetings and, uh, and see possible uh, uh, common actions to be developed during this uh, uh, year. So one element is uh, what we have been uh, doing during during uh, 2008 and 2009 since we meet in Barcelona, but also uh, the renovation of the willingness both by Barcelona uh, City Council and the WOG University to continue the Seren City action as one of the highlights of the agreement of the go new government in uh, Barcelona. And the lead of Barcelona promoting sharing uh, uh, actions between uh, cities in this field together with the previous cities that has been uh, opening the field with Amsterdam here uh, in, in, which uh, started the, in, in 2016 the first summit and then also with uh, New York in the following uh, year um, and we are also very happy extremely happy that uh, there is the, the continuation also involved the joining in the leadership of another uh, city which is uh, Seoul uh, which Seoul has uh, um, uh, agreed in order to join Barcelona into uh, promoting the Sharing City Action Program of collaboration between cities and also to host the following summit so next year we will be in Seoul the, the Sharing Cities and uh, uh, this is a, a, new, a new moment in the future in which to project a, a, a common uh, work. I think that is going to be a very important opportunity also to open this work to Asia. Seoul, as you can imagine, is a key city in Asia context. Uh, we both doing in Europe and North America. So I think it was a very important step to kind of uh, start working with other continents far away from, let's say, the, the Northwest world. And I, I really looking forward to go to, go, to go to Seoul, the first city in the world that declared themselves sharing city and making a very interesting uh, evolution into from sharing economy to into common sharing economy, which I think is something we're going to be discussing these days. So, uh, I was in, in, in Seoul last September and the Mayor Park directly transmit to uh, Barcelona his sharing vision with the Sharing City Action Program and also with the positioning of Barcelona in this field and the previous cities and in this I think it's going to be a very fruitful context for developing new new actions. I would highlight also how far uh, during this year uh, there has been the celebration of uh, of uh, Sharing City Sweden, it was a regional uh, summit on the from the Sweden uh, context, but still putting the agenda, the importance of sustainability uh, and the the how far the digital platforms and and uh, citizens engagement can support the transition towards uh, climate change uh, uh, cities. Actually, uh, this is very present in the in the declaration. Uh, the, the question of sustainability and the declaration and each of its principles become for us the target of our actions, being the, the importance of the differentiation between platforms, those platforms that have a disruptive impact and does not respect uh, local regulations uh, or does uh, 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 create attention with uh, uh, rights like uh, right to housing or, or right to the city, the importance of its differentiation the importance, two of the principles is about the, the, the rights of labor and that the platforms promote good conditions of uh, uh, work, uh, working uh, conditions in the platforms. The, th the fourth one, which actually this year is a key element in the stand, 
is the question of inclusion from a social perspective, gender perspective, uh, uh, diversity, functionality perspective, from different perspectives that the platforms actually assure inclusion of the diversity. And actually, this is one of the key points of work of this year. 40% of the program of this three days program in the same city stand is dedicated to gender, feminist and diversity. So we have uh, took this principle very much in the front line. Uh, public uh, protection is the following principle. Then environmental sustainability against here uh, the emerging the lead of viable cities that will be, uh, will be presented following and the uh, sharing city Sweden as the cities which are promoting uh, sustainability through digital uh, innovation and, and civic engagement. Uh, the principle of data sovereignty of citizens, uh, digital right as a central also uh, uh, dimension as digital uh, platforms are happening in the digital sphere, the necessity to pro promote um, data platforms and to promote and preserve uh, protocols that assure uh, uh, the principles of, of the key principles of uh, neutrality in the internet. The eight principles regard to uh, cities. Uh, Sovereignty, how far the cities uh, can support between each other and, and do actions between each other in order to assure that the, the, there is the preservation and the respect of the cities in order to sober, be sovereign and preserve the rights in their own uh, um, space and also to be able to empower the cities in front of, uh, of digital platforms that disrupt and does not respect uh, local uh, regulation. Tomorrow in the cities encounter, uh, we are going to be specifically working on this issue about data access and in the platforms around the short vacational rental and how cities can collaborate in order to assure a more preservation of the, of the will of the cities in front of these uh, uh, platforms. The nine principle is the economic promotion and, the and, and also the opportunity of promote digital platforms that are inclusive and sustainable and that are in line with the, with the goals of the city, but also the global sustainable goals, which has been a key element of this year evolution and, and work uh, 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 together. So connecting the, the platform dimension with the city policy dimension, but also with the global uh, objectives uh, dimension. And finally, the preservation of the general interest and the, and the right to the city as uh, a key principle also to be uh, uh, fulfilled through the uh, platform economy uh, policies. I would highlight uh, from, from this year, I would highlight from this year the Again, this, uh, at, at the end, 30 cities uh, representatives coming here, but, but also that Senate City Action does not uh, depart from administrative centric, thinking that policy is only being done in the, in the government uh, institutions, but actually civil society, uh, businesses, and, and research centers also pro pro can play an important role into the co-creation of the policies and together uh, find new solutions. So the, here and the, from this perspective, here and the Seren City Stand Lab, a proper laboratory in the middle of the smart city. Here there is involved 150 actors from all the quadruple, um, quadruple elix. Here is the, the whole list of public administration, mainly city governments, but also from the European Commission. We have been joined by the, by uh, later on we will have a presentation from DG Growth and, uh, and uh, also civil society actors, business platforms and uh, universities. And uh, as it would be present, the, the stand has been awarded and recognized as part of the European Social Economy Regions Plans uh, 2019. So with this, I would uh, uh, just highlight the, the main elements of work of this year in the stand that has been the future of work. There are several sessions both in the stand but also in the Congress around the labor rights and the, and the redefinition of welfare state for uh, assuring them. Uh, gender and inclusivity, again, very central. Uh, sustainability and the climate change uh, goals. And finally, the question of uh, data and digital uh, sovereignty. So with this, I would like to give the floor 
to um, uh, Ula. I say it well. <laughs> from <laughs> excuse me. Uh, Ulla from DG Growth, which is going to explain us an initiative uh, to support uh, uh, cities uh, that are, uh, she's uh, leading. Thank you. Okay, so. So I would want to start with a video to explain what uh, the European Social Economy Regions project is about. And let's see. I have followed the development of European Social Economy Regions project uh, since the beginning. If we want the future of the European Union to be based on sustainable development and economic and social progress, we have really to support social economy. The European Social Economy Regions project brings together regions and cities working on social economy and using this to bring together the different stakeholders in the region with regional authorities to discuss relevant issues for social economy. Social economy happens in the villages, in the cities, in the regions. It is a very important part of European economy and uh, it is fundamentally a regional issue because you cannot transfer the enterprises elsewhere in the world. Already today about one in four newly founded companies belongs to the social economy. It provides a job for 30 million people. The work of ESRA has seen the importance of listening and learning from each other. The added value that the European social economy regions can bring to the European Economic and Social Committee is to really uh, bring in good ideas and solutions and examples what the regions are doing. The city of Strasbourg was very pleased uh, to participate to the initiative. Either was for us a good opportunity to have a direct dialogue with the European Commission. These two years we have uh, more than 80 regions and cities on board. There is a strong need for awareness. We have social innovations need EU co-funding. We need good examples that we can gather and share and replicate. But we also need to just see what to do as policy makers and representatives at European level to facilitate much better cooperation and co-production that is so well needed that regions are a good example of. We will transform this initiative, the European Social Economy Regions, which we have started two years ago, because we have seen the huge interest. So we will continue and we will evolve in order to what we call European Social Economy Missions to share this knowledge with others. And this will then help to build regional partnerships. Okay, so. This gave you an overview of uh, what Social Economy uh, Regions uh, project is about. And it was not only for regions, regions and cities could apply, uh, or even villages. So we didn't have any size limitation. And so everything started in 2018. And um, because there is a need on social economy because it is perceived very differently in the different countries. And uh, we heard from the stakeholders in social economy that they feel they are often not enough in contact with the regional or with the city authorities. So we wanted to help them to reach out to the authorities. So we launched a call to regional or cities authorities to apply for the social economy regions but it was just a very simple, we launched it via Twitter and an email uh, to our expert group and saying, if you want to apply a one page, what you're going to do, but you need to somehow use an event where you are engaging with your social economy stakeholders. So really simple. And we uh, got about uh, 30 applications in 2018. And in 2019, we got 50 applications, more than 50. And we started this without any budget, 
because we thought when we wait and we ask for money, we put it in our work program, I think most of you know, you are also public authorities, getting money isn't so quick. But we thought we really want to accelerate, we want to do it, and let's test it. Let's test whether when people think about the European Commission, they only think about money, or whether they are also ready to engage without money. A and it worked. So that's why uh, we have now this 80 cities and regions, which we brought together twice. We now, in the meantime, of course, have asked for the money, and the fact that we had already responses helped us to make our case. And that's why, what I have mentioned uh, in the video also, we have now what we call social economy missions. And this will be launched uh, in the beginning of next year, where we make money available for cities or regions when, for example, they have identified a challenge in social economy like social public procurement or uh, work integration they can propose this and invite then other regions or cities to work with them on this topic. And this is then a precursor for a regional partnership. So we are not talking about big money, but seed money to start. And uh, if here we have some of the statistics. So here you see ESA 2019, uh, the different dots. Uh, and uh, we even had reached out uh, to Curaçao and St. Martin. And it was just a little anecdote because what we offered additionally, we said, okay, when you're having this meeting, a colleague from the European Commission is coming and discussing with you what, can be, what is done on European level. The fact that one of us went to Curaçao because the colleagues there will say, oh, we are so happy to see somebody else from the European Commission, not DG DEFCO, like development aid. That must be really important. So there, and then I was there, <laughs> and the social entrepreneurs came to me and said, thank you. It's the first time that we have managed to speak to the minister. Three ministers were there, and now they have put a law in place on social economy. And they now want also to work as Caribbeans to put their knowledge together. I think this was a very nice story. They wouldn't have had the attention of their policy makers if we wouldn't have moved there because I was sitting in the plane thinking, why am I doing this to myself, flying there for two days and maybe it's worth nothing. But it was really gratifying because you saw the local interest and how much it helped them to move policy makers. So this is a comparison 2018-2019. Uh, we have some blank spots, and uh, the blank spots, that will be in 2020 because we will launch again. So to uh, increase even the network, we will launch beginning of uh, December, again via Twitter and uh, via email, very simple. Uh, the ESA 2020, if you want to participate by just, let's say, organizing something, this is possible. But now, as we had so many requests, we cannot offer that we from the European Commission come to all the events. It's just uh, getting a bit too difficult. So we only said we go to the countries where we haven't had yet any um, ESA event, or we, go, we, we choose the 10 most innovative uh, gatherings. So there is still a chance that we might be going, but not to all of them. And this eight regions were discussing between each other which are the areas where we should focus. So it was a real policy co-creation process and we use the information we have from this AT region for now so planning what we are proposing for the new com uh, European Commission to do in social economy because we have the input directly. So I think this is a very good example for co-creation. And uh, another thing we want to do, we really want to have a social economic community of practitioners, which we want where people can work with each other and exchange good practices. Just a, a little hint, which might be interesting for you to know. I don't know whether you are aware of Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs, which allows exchanges, not only for social economy enterprises, but for entrepreneurs to go in another country to have an experience. And young doesn't mean young in age, it means young as entrepreneur. 
So you can also be silver economy <laughs> and you want, but you start your own business and you want to go to an entrepreneur in another country, you can do this was via Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs. And also I wanted to highlight the European Solidarity Corps because the European Solidarity Corps is not only exchange for young people, there is also the possibility of employment. You can, as a social enterprise, apply to be part of the European Solidarity Corp. And we are launching uh, different social innovation competitions also. And as I said, we are publishing a lot on Twitter, so I put also our Twitter account here, so maybe some of you get inspired. Thank you. Thank you very much. Now we, we, we keep in Europe, but from the voice of Vienna that has unified the voices of European cities on the positioning of the Committee of Regions and Cities. Thank you. Thank you, Mayo. Uh, thank you very much. My name is Clement Simpeler. I'm the head of the economic department of the city of Vienna. And um, Mayo and Alvaro mentioned before the um, declaration we had last year. And to, to tackle these topics, uh, you need the European level. And that is why you need the European institutions. Why do we need to tackle this um, at the European level? We have a fragmentation of the European single market right now in the topic of sharing economy due to the fact that the um, e-commerce directive, which is the legal base of all these business cases, um, was launched in the year 2000. Just to give you an impression, the first iPhone was launched by 2007. So the e-commerce e uh, directive is really outdated and this uh, causes a lot of problems. And one of the main problems is that the law is not made by the lawmakers of the European Parliament, but by the courts and the different member states. And so we have a huge fragmentation of the um, single market within the European um, uh, Union. Um, and that's why uh, we try to, um, uh, yeah, to, to take pressure in the European Union to, um, uh, to re-debate on this e-commerce directive. And we do this um, via the European Committee of the Regions. The European Committee of the Region represents the local and regional politicians and authorities across the European Union. Um, they have 350 members. Um, just an example, uh, in Vienna, uh, uh, our mayor, Mr. Ludwig, is is member of the European uh, Committee of the Regions, and um, this European Committee of the Regions has the possibility to do um, own uh, or initiative opinions, and that is what happened uh, just a few months ago. The uh, COR decided to make an own initiative opinion on a European framework for regulatory responses to the collaborative economy, and the rapporteur is Mr. Florian Schitt, who is a member of the Vienna Regional Parliament. Um, and that's why I'm here. Um, and um, the kickoff was in June. Um, the first discussion uh, in the economy uh, committee was uh, in July. We had a stakeholder consultation by September. And the opinion draft uh, was anonymously adopted in the ECON by October, but still is not adopted uh, by, the, uh, by the... It's better? Sorry. It's still not adopted uh, by the plenary because the plenary session will take place um, um, in December uh, 5th. What is the content? Um, we have a lot of um, uh, uh, things in this. Um, uh, oh, that's fine. Yeah, uh, in this um, uh, opinion, and Barcelona was so kind to take a copy of the English version. So, if you if you want it, you can just take one. Um, I just highlight four core topics in this opinion. The first one is the data question. If you want to enforce the law, you need to know what happens in your city. So you need the platforms to contact the local authorities and you need the data to make sure that you can, for example, enforce tax laws and things like this. And this is probably the most, um, the most important uh, topic uh, we have and we talked about since Amsterdam 2016 um, and further on. The second topic is uh, the legal certainty. Um, the stronger the country of origin principle is within the European Union, the more important it is that you can enforce local and regional law in a foreign country within the European Union. And this is almost impossible, impossible to cities. And I'm talking um, for a city with um, almost 2 million inhabitants, so we're one of the largest cities in the European Union. And even to us, it's very hard to have a law suite, for example, in Ireland um, or in the Netherlands or in other uh, countries. 
Um, so this is the law enforcement um, and the, law, uh, law, uh, the legal certainty is very important. Today the European High Court is again um, talking about the Airbnb issue from, the Paris, uh, from this Paris case, uh, all of you may know. The third topic um, I want to highlight is the liability of the platforms. Um, at the moment, uh, the e-commerce directive uh, says, um, in a way, the platform is a billboard. You can put an announcement on it and another person can come to take the announcement. But there is no responsibility for the content of these announcements. Um, for example, there is no um, possibility to, uh, to ban social housing from the platform. I mean, you can do it in every single case, going to Ireland or to Netherlands or wherever the platform is located and try to fight this via the court, but that's very expensive and very hard to, to tackle. So um, this is not um, a, a, um, a situation uh, that can um, stay, so we need a liability of the platforms for what happens on the platforms. And the last uh, topic is housing. Um, of course, this is uh, to the short-term rental topic. Um, the housing topic is for a lot of, not for all, but for many cities, it's a, it's, it's a crucial uh, topic. And the question is if it should be very clear that the question of housing has to be regulated at the local basis uh, because the cities have different situations um, and they, they know better um, what, is, uh, what needs uh, are in the city than, than uh, at the European level. Um, the, the point is, um, during the work at this uh, opinion, uh, there was a statement of the president-elect uh, Ursula von der Leyen, uh, and she made clear that there should be a Digital Services Act, which has to be finished by the end of 2020. And this uh, Digital Service, uh, Services Act means that they really will um, reformulate the e-commerce directive. So what happens in the next, let's say, six to eight months in Brussels will be the basic for our work in the cities for the next 10 to 15 years. So it's very important to really uh, concentrate on this Brussels debate now, uh, because if we have the Digital Services Act, it will pick. Uh, they will not change it two years later when we then say, oh, that's not, not the way we, we, we want uh, to have it. And the European Parliament also started um, on working on this topic. The IMCO, which is the committee for the single market, um, uh, is, is launching an own uh, initiative opinion as well. We do not know yet who the rapporteur will be, but this will be a very important person for the question of the sharing economy. Okay. So we
Thank you, everyone. Uh, we are going to continue with the program. And, uh, uh, sorry, for the sorry for the disruption of gover governmental disruption. Uh, uh, we continue with the presentation and then uh, uh, with uh, uh, Vienna. And then we will have from Seven City Sweden and Viable Cities program. Thank you. Yeah, I did um, um, almost finish. There was just uh, one really crucial point um, uh, I started to, uh, to talk about. Um, the formation of the new Digital Services Act will take place in the first half of the next year in Brussels. And if we want to make our influence as cities clear, we have to do it now. Because otherwise we have the new Digital Services Act without the opinions. And we try to... Um, to took all the inputs we got from the Sharing Cities Declaration, um, also the Amsterdam Group, um, the US Cities uh, Group, and so on, um, to condensate this in the in the um, uh, opinion for the Committee of the Regions. We sent it to all of you. We have the uh, addresses. Uh, we didn't get uh, any amendments, so we hope we really um, uh, uh, took the points uh, we need. Um, uh, and uh, the, the plan is after the um, adoption of the opinion uh, in December uh, to go with it to the European Parliament in the next step because the European Parliament and the European Commissions will be the, um, the, the institutions which will decide um, uh, on the uh, Digital Services Act. 
But what is very important, um, the European Commission means the member states. So please, uh, to all of you, lobby wherever you can um, on these topics. Um, it, this is not a task um, of the city of Vienna. I hope it's a task for a lot of cities. So lobby with your parliamentarians from the European Parliament, um, with your commissioners if you have an access to them, um, of course with your neighboring cities, countries whatsoever, because otherwise it will not work. Um, we, we are very sure that there will be a lot of lobby activities by the platforms uh, because this Digital Services Act is not only on Airbnb, Uber and so on, but also on Facebook, Google, Amazon and so on. So this will be a funny debate in Brussels in the next, let's say, 12 months. Um, and um, I count on you because this is not a Viennese topic. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to contact me or one of my colleagues. Um, and uh, yeah, together we will hopefully have a regulation which help, uh, helps us to enforce our law and to make our cities a better place to live. Thank you very much. Who's taking the mic? Thank you very much. <laughs> Vienna. So now please, uh, sharing, sharing City Sweden and the Viable uh, Cities program. Okay, we're sitting here. Okay. We have four. Okay, just uh, a little bit of rearrangement. But uh, my name is uh, Kes McCormick, and I'm the uh, program coordinator for Sharing City Sweden. Um, I'd just like to say thank you very much to, uh, to Mayo and all the people that have organised this fantastic Sharing Cities uh, Action Encounter. Um, it is truly a laboratory, a laboratory of uh, co-creation. I think what we just experienced then was one of those moments. Um, but I'm here today, it's not just me, I'm here with several of, of the team in Sharing Cities Sweden sitting along here who will all be speaking today but we'll come to introductions soon. Um, but Sharing uh, Cities Sweden is a, a national program for the sharing economy in cities in Sweden, um, funded by Venova and 50 partners who put in uh, co-financing, and we're part of also Viable Cities, a strategic innovation program for smart and sustainable cities. If you head in that direction to the Nordics, you will hear much more about Viable Cities. You will also hear about it today from several of our speakers. Um, but when we talk about uh, the sharing economy uh, in cities in Sweden, uh, in this program, we're very interested in thinking about it in terms of space, how we use space in cities, uh, how we relate to goods and services, and how we relate to mobility, and how we take a systems perspective on the sharing economy. So it's not just all about Airbnb and Uber, it's about many kinds of grassroots initiatives and different ways of thinking about the sharing economy. In fact, when we talk about the sharing economy, what we're really talking about is changing consumption patterns or rethinking our consumption patterns. Because if we, if we wish to have a smart and sustainable world, we're going to need to shift consumption. It may not look like it out here, but consumption will need to change in many different ways. Um, so in the program, we critically and actively work with the sharing economy, which means we take a very critical perspective on it. Which parts of the sharing economy are the best for us to be working with? Which parts produce the positive impacts which we want to have in the world around us? Um, within the program, we have established four different test beds in Stockholm, Jetteboy, Malmö and Umeå, all sitting up here who will talk very soon. Um, these test beds are yeah, world-leading centres of experimentation. I might say. They really are setting the scene when we talk about the sharing economy in cities, and you will see when they start to present here. We've also established six strategic projects which are on cross-cutting issues, issues like business models or behavioural economics, things like that, which we need to think about when we're talking about the sharing economy. And of course a national node whose job it is to coordinate all these Swedes um, and the work they're doing. Um, 
yeah, I think I would just finish by saying once again thank you to Sharing Cities Action and all the work that they're doing. Um, this kind of event, to be in this kind of conference, to have such a prominent position, to have the Mayor of Barcelona turn up, um, it's pretty fantastic. And we're very glad to be part of these activities. So now I will pass the microphone over to Charlie Goulstrom from Stockholm, who works with KTH and Rice, but I will let her introduce herself a bit more. She will talk about viable cities and many other things. Here we go. Thank you, Kes. So my name is Charlie Goulstrom, and I'm a research and design strategist at Viable Cities, and I also represent the Sharing Cities Stockholm testbed. Now, the great value of Sharing Cities initiatives is, of course, that it engages people, citizen engagement, platform cooperatives, all these processes for co-creation that we see around here in the Sharing Cities Alliance community. That is key because that can be a driver for so much more and for climate transition. This is why we're so fortunate in Sweden that the, the Sharing Cities Sweden program is actually hosted by a large program called Viable Cities. This is a 10-year initiative that uh, has come about from uh, public funding. It's um, 100 million euros over 10 years to support Swedish cities in the transition process. This means that we write calls, we formulate calls for research and innovation, inviting consortia around cities, both civic society, academia, and city representatives themselves, businesses, etc., to work together in order to speed up the climate transition by means of digitalization and citizen engagement. So you understand how well these two programs work together. I'm very glad to tell you more about this, but I think the good idea is for you to join us in the Nordic Pavilion, perhaps tomorrow when we have a mingling session at 5.30. But we also have several people here in the room who can talk about viable cities. Now instead I'll hand over to my colleague from Umeå, Philip Nerslund, who will tell us about the Sharing Cities Umeå testbed. Well, uh, thank you very much, Charlie. Uh, coming up next to you, yeah, great. Uh, so my name is Philip Naslun. I'm from the city of Umeå. Oh, sorry, do you hear me? Yep. So from the city of Umeå, northern part of Sweden, uh, we are launching a program on the sharing economy. So for me, I guess I want to say the question is why? I think, why are we doing sharing? Uh, in Umeå, we don't have the larger platforms coming in, so we are pretty much doing it ourselves, forming the city. and. I would like to say that you have to understand the need from the citizens, or both from the city and the citizens. It can be some practical issues from the city of Umeå, of course. We have uh, some air pollution uh, problems in the central city. So we're looking at like, how can um, shared mobility, as a sense, solve a part of that? Or when should we invest in electric vehicles? So it can be different uh, tools to reach a success in the city. So for us, it's to understand when should sharing be a part of it and when can we have other solutions joining in to, to solve the problem. A, I would say that the program on a national level is really important for us because it was that would made it possible to test new solutions. Uh, and it suited as well in the strategy in Umeå because we had this, um, the goal of being a pioneer in circular economy. So that was launched 2016 from the, from the political board. And for the... The city administration, it was kind of this, what is circular? And uh, I think um, we started educating ourselves, taking support from uh, local uh, consultant firms and trying to understand the concept of circularity. And then when this call came out by 2017, 2018, I think it was a perfect match to really try something new, to really, really um, make uh, a test a test of circularity and sharing at the same time. But it is suited very well for the city. Um, and I, yeah, I think maybe that is what I want to say. I think, um, yeah, one thing I want to say about sharing is that um, it requires new kind of government. We are facing this, the sense that you have to collaborate. So in Umeå, we have nine partners joining the municipality on this quest. So we have to give away a bit of power power over um, planning, power over the city. So we have to make decisions with the citizens, with companies to reach the goal. 
So I think that is a lesson learned from this program, how to govern the city is changing. So I think I want to address that issue that you really think of that. Because uh, in the last uh, centuries, we just could plan the city kind of uh, from the city perspective. But now you have to really engage with others. So, um, so that is really uh, key. And um, yeah, so I mean, for the size of city of Umeå, we can pretty much experiment ourselves because, uh, yeah, so not many other platforms are intervening with our own. <laughs> but we really invite everyone to join us and to, to invest and to try to understand the ecosystem in the city. So, yeah, I think I leave it with that and uh, pass the mic over to uh, Tove from Gothenburg. Yeah. Thank you, Philip. Um, my name is Tove Lund and I work at the city of Gothenburg in West Sweden. We have worked with the sharing economy for several years and mainly seen it as a potential tool for exploring how we can reach a more sustainable consumption and sustainable city. Um, in, early on in Gothenburg, we started with mapping out the local ecosystem of sharing initiatives because we have many of them coming from the civil society and small entrepreneurs. And that later became something that we call the smart map. That is today a digital platform that is open source and available for other cities who would like to map out their own sharing economy in their cities. It's a good way to visualize and we use it to promote the sharing culture in our city and to show citizens where they can find things like their closest co-working space, bike kitchen, toy library, etc., etc. Uh, and being part of this Sharing City Sweden <clears throat> it means that we are now 15 partners from both the local government, the private sector, academia and civil society, which is a good way to be in a quadruple helix co-creation process and to develop our city. Uh, we are working now with the sharing economy as a tool for city planning and urban developing uh, one urban development project called Mastukskayen. We are going to build uh, thousands of new apartments and uh, office spaces in our city during the coming years. And we see the sharing economy as a good tool to explore how we can make it more easy for our citizens to live sustainable there by integrating the sharing economy initiatives from the beginning. Um, yeah, that's Gothenburg. <laughs> a lot of things happening. And uh, please visit the smartmap.com uh, if you want to know more about what's going on in Gothenburg or if you want to use it as a tool for your city. And I am to tell you just a little bit about the test bed in Stockholm. The four test beds are actually really different. What you heard now are test beds run by the municipality. Tove and Philip are both civil servants. In Stockholm, we are working as, through action research together with a citizen initiative called Hammarby Sjöstad 2.0 because we've chosen to work in an eco district which exists since about 25 years in Stockholm and which is really the result of very good planning to create a smart, sustain, or at least a sustainable environment. So the question for us is how can we engage those people who are really stakeholders in, a, in an area where they are happy to live and where planners and the city of Stockholm worked together many years ago to create a really good environment. Well, there is an interest, there is a citizen initiative, and together with them we formulated a local climate goal. So now our work is to actually spread the word to other citizens in the local area. So we run uh, workshops, you should pick up our little leaflet here. We run workshops called Klimatspanana, with families and with children, for example, on issues such as uh, food waste or how can you get rid of plastic or how can you build your own uh, air quality sensor to put it on your balcony and then we can start measuring together, things like that. But we also discovered there's a big interest in, uh, in urban farming and in food and I think this is quite a common topic that pops up in the Sharing Cities initiatives, at least in Scandinavia. And so um, around that topic, we've been working together now for a few uh, months together with Husqvarna. They thought of providing tools for urban farming for residents in, um, in this district. And with them, we are bringing out today the Lån and Lådan concept because we need to trigger sharing. These are uh, residential blocks where people are quite well off and have no obvious reason for sharing if you ask themselves. 
in our service, we find that people no longer knock on each other's door to borrow salt and sugar and things like this. But we think that there is an interest in, in strengthening social cohesion. So we do this by placing a sort of delivery box for sharing. We call it a street box for sharing. And we place it outside those locked doors. So there can be a possibility for neighbors to very easily um, uh, exhibit what they want to share in a virtual Lone Lodan, and then you walk out and you can get the things, or the things that you ordered online. So it's a sort of mix between delivery boxes, and we have heard that here in Barcelona, delivery boxes were installed in the old town with the effect, the impact of 96% carbon dioxide reduction in emission of um, carbon dioxide. Have you heard this? This is quite impressive, and this is through the collaboration between Barcelona within the Grow Smarter project, uh, where also Stockholm and Colonies um, are, are participating. So it's really impressive when things uh, can be uh, linked like that, I think. So linking up initiatives with one another, I think, is key. I don't know to whom I hand over now, but maybe we have questions from the audience. Do you want to add something, Alex? Uh, I, I can just add that uh, some of the investigations in the uh, Stockholm testbed has been around uh, also how technology can support uh, these efforts. And, and one of the important things with sharing is, of course, discovery. So if someone else has a resource that I don't need to buy, etc. But it's also about uh, skills and, and the right to repair. So some things can be about information about workshops on uh, repairing devices rather than uh, getting new ones. And in terms of transport, this, uh, this box is, of course, not, not only for sharing, but, but anybody could use this digital box. And you can easily use these uh, one-time digital codes, which will allow you to open a specific box. And this could be, I mean, sharing in your family to solve the life puzzle, but it could also be not having to wait at home for deliveries to come, etc. And also different delivery companies can share resources because... Uh, obviously, if, if every company uh, has their own delivery truck uh, emitting um, fuels, or if you have one which has a shared effort of delivering to, to uh, different kinds of services, there's a big difference. So uh, I think that th this is important. And lastly, also the legal aspects, because sharing things, sometimes the resources can be expensive. So what happens if I land somebody in my car? What will the insurance say? So that there is an automatic framework with contracts, etc., that you can easily sign up. So it feels safe also to, to uh, lend each other uh, these resources or things, etc. Okay, thanks. Okay, clearly I have the easiest moderation job in the world. They just moderate themselves. It's wonderful. Um, the Swedes have also been so efficient with time that we've got some time for questions. Would anyone like to ask anything? Come on, don't be embarrassed. We're in a creative laboratory. When I, when I have students and they don't ask questions, I say I'll pick a volunteer, but since I'll, 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 I don't have to do that. We will, of course, uh, be around here wandering around, so we're very happy to answer questions or to, to discuss anything we talked about today. Um, yeah, I think I would just like to finish by saying that, you know, when we talk about concepts like smart cities or sharing cities, we should be very critical of these concepts. We should ask, what do they mean exactly? How are they different to what we're living now? What are the positives? What are the negatives? What are the dark sides? Things like that. Um, we should really be starting with the question when we talk about cities, what do we want from our cities? How do we want to live in our cities? If we answer those questions, then we can head to the technologies after that. Don't start with the technologies and go in that direction. This is really important when we think about our urban centres and the way we want to live in cities. Um, and I think that's what we're doing both in viable cities and in the Sharing Cities Sweden program. And I think that the Swedish culture has, uh, has that in its background quite, quite strongly. Um, it is fantastic with Seoul, I will say. I'm very excited to be heading to Seoul. Um, it's halfway on the way to Australia, so that's great. I'm almost there. Um, but no, it is really fantastic, I think, to bring in the, an Asian perspective, to head to the Asian countries, to see what's happening there, and to move away. Maybe sometimes we have a very European-centric perspective to connecting to other parts of the world, which are also working very much with the sharing economy. Um, if you're interested in any of our lessons or findings, the things we're learning from all of these projects and things we're talking about, we do have a website 
Google, if you jump onto Google, Sharing City Sweden, you'll find it. Um, and I'll just finish by this. I think it's definitely time for a drink. So I'll see you in a bar somewhere in Barcelona. Thank you very much. I think we're finished. Yeah, I could have add some things, but I didn't. Uh, I had the power. <laughs>